When I was entering the 12th grade, I began to get close to a boy named Andrew. The first time we met, he started talking to me in a canteen. Andrew was kind, tall, and handsome. I mean, any girl would have liked him. When he asked for my phone number, I gave it without a second thought. I was so, so happy. He often sent me messages, just asking whether I have eaten, what I was doing, or how was my day. Once he picked me up to go to school together, I woke up unbelievably early just to stare at my face in the mirror. Was my hair okay? Were my pimples visible? Did I look pretty? When we arrived at school, many eyes stared at me curiously. I glanced at Andrew, but he was indifferent. It was just me who felt awkward and kept looking down all the way through the school corridor. You could say that Andrew was a pretty popular boy at school. Pretty much all the school beauties liked him, but for whatever reason, he picked me instead, which, well, you could rightfully say that my face wasn't the prettiest in the lot, and my figure was as flat as a broom handle. <laughs> Shortly after, we got closer, and would often go out on dates together. Until one day, Andrew took me on a day trip to the mountainside. There, he took me to what looked like a villa. I was surprised when he opened the door. The whole room was filled with flowers and candles, Polaroid photos of us together, and of myself, which I had no idea how he could get a hold of them. I was so touched. I asked what this was all about. Andrew just smiled and knelt before me with a bouquet of roses in his hand and a box of the prettiest necklace I had ever seen. He confessed his feeling to me. I just nodded while holding back sobs and tears of joy. Andrew got up and jumped happily while repeatedly saying, Thank you, I accepted his feeling. I just laughed and then Andrew put the necklace around my neck. Beautiful, he said. He embraced me and held my hand. We smiled and I felt very, very happy, like floating on cloud nine. One year we were together through ups and downs. We had fights every now and then. Well, love is not all smooth sailing, right? The most important thing was that we could reflect on ourselves and forgive each other. Until one day I heard Andrew had an affair with my own classmates. I was devastated. I looked for him all around and found him chilling with his friends at the school backyard. When I confronted him, he only answered with apologies and that he was blinded by emotions. I was angry and disappointed. A week passed, Andrew kept coming to apologize and I kept avoiding him. But in the end, I gave in and accepted him again. One year went by after that incident, and now we were college students. True, Andrew did change. He became much sweeter and more considerate of me. He would often give me surprises and buy me things I never asked for. He would compliment and boast about me in front of his friends, and they would always say they were jealous of our romantic love, just like in the movies. But often too, Andrew would get angry if I received messages from male friends or he would ask super detail if I mentioned a name of a new male friend at school. Who is he? How do you know him? Why did you meet him? Do you really have to work together with him? I tried to stay positive and thought that he simply loved me so much. After all, in the end, he would always apologize and admit that he was just jealous. Little things like that kept happening, and I started to realize how possessive Andrew was. Once, he saw my teammate took me home to my boarding house because it was already late at night. Andrew was furious. He screamed and kept pointing madly at me. He pushed me until my head hit the cupboard and my lips bled. When he saw what happened, he panicked and immediately hugged me who had fallen on the floor while apologizing again and again. I tried to stay positive and convince myself that something like this happened and it was just a momentary outburst. But Andrew's rude and possessive behavior got worse. For every little thing, he would blame me and get unnaturally mad he would berate me that I wasn't attractive and that there wouldn't be a guy as good as him to me, that I had to thank him for dating me. He knew I was not confident in my appearance, and he did not hesitate to use it against me. Once, he slapped me, grabbed my hair, and kicked me. Patience and crying were all that I could do. Always after this anger receded, Andrew would beg for forgiveness, that he could not control his emotions, and always, in the following days, he would treat me like a princess and flatter me with love and foolishly, I gave in. I tried to stay strong and convince myself that Andrew would change, but in fact, it wasn't the case. Andrew was getting worse. I became more and more quiet and nervous because of fear that was unconsciously embedded in my mind. All the small things I did, 
I was afraid of being wrong and making Andrew mad. In the end, I chose to stay quiet and obey all his wishes. One day, we fought over trivial matters. Again, Andrew could not control his anger and beat me. I couldn't stand it anymore. I ran away and stayed at my friend's place, and with tears on my face, I told her everything that had happened. Incidentally, her mother was a psychologist. She told me that what Andrew did was not normal in a relationship. Andrew not only abused me physically, but also verbally. Consciously or not, he tried to control me and control our relationship as he wished. That moment, my eyes opened. I went to see Andrew on campus to put an end to our relationship. First, he was shocked, begged for forgiveness, and promised not to be abusive again. But when I was determined to break up with him, his reaction turned sour and said that I didn't know my place. Before I could leave, he dragged me to a quiet place and slapped me so hard I fell to the ground. I tried running away, but he pulled my hair. I didn't know how long we were there and how badly he had beaten me, until finally a lecturer passed by and saved me. Half-conscious, I was taken to the campus clinic. After that incident, I never had contact with Andrew again. The campus administrator asked me for an explanation, and I heard Andrew was suspended and was required to follow psychological guidance. Sometimes I saw him at the campus, looking at me cynically. But I have friends who always supported me and were willing to accompany me whenever I was feeling uncomfortable. Over time, my daily life returned to normal and I was happy. Was I traumatized? Yes. Of course this experience still leaves a mark. But I took it as a lesson to better appreciate and love myself. There is no perfect relationship and expectations will always be there, but that doesn't mean we have to lose ourselves on that journey. Learn to accept yourself as you are, and don't be afraid to ask for help when you feel down and lost. Be open to the people closest to you, because they can give you advices when you feel trapped. In the end, our happiness is in our own hands. So always love yourself. <laughs>